And hey, John. Yes, talk to me, Kevin. I'm sorry, John. I just wanted to introduce Joanne. Joanne Brown, I think she's on the call. She's a, uh, she's a, a, a good friend and a former colleague, and hopefully she'll become a current colleague. I love that. And welcome to the call, Joanne. Good to have you here. So Joanne, if you have any questions for me, reach out to me, 727-686-0404. I'm a phone call away. All right, so I'm on page 99, and repetition is the mother of learning. So if you feel like you're in the twilight zone and you're reliving the last couple days, uh, you're not imagining it, you are. Uh, I'm at the page of, top of page 99. Actually, I'm going to go to the bottom of the page. I'm going to ask you a question. If I told you there was an out-of-town buyer who just got in this morning who is going to pay cash and needs to purchase a home by the end of the week, could any of you help them? Yes. Raise, yes. Your, hand if, yes. Ra raise your hand if you want that buyer. I've got that buyer's name and number sitting on my desk right here, and I'll send it to you after the call. Raise your hand now if you want that buyer yes. lead. Yeah, 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 of course you do. And that buyer is in your database waiting for you to call them. I'm pausing for a reason. I'm pausing because I want you to think about that. Now, raise your hand if you believe that. Raise your hand that if you believe that that opportunity is waiting for you to call them. My hand's up. Who else? Love that. You know, you guys, I could see you. So when you don't raise your hand, Paige, I'm thinking, you really don't believe this? <laughs> Paige, you froze. That's why your hand is not up. Paige is frozen. <laughs> Shirley Robinson, you're not frozen. Raise your hand. There you go. Love it. Somebody go unfreeze Paige. That's kind of weird. Okay, so now I'm at the top of page 99. Nothing is more important to your sales career than prospective buyers and sellers. To have a viable business, you simply must have the, you must have the client leads. To have a business that pays you a lot of money, you will need a lot of leads. What you have to embrace is the fact that it is the number of qualified leads you have that will either grow your business, keep you in business, or put you out of business. Now, what are you hearing? What am I saying? Now, you know me, for those of you who have been on my calls every day for the last four months, you know me that I'm not saying that you should not work with people unless they're looking to buy or sell right now. That would be a qualified lead. That would be somebody who wants to buy a home or sell a home in the next 30 days. I'm not saying that because you are in the business of serving others and you are lead generating in order to create a better opportunity for those that you have the privilege to work with, work for. And if somebody wants to sell their home a year from now, you're not gonna treat them any different than somebody who wants to sell their home in the next 30 days. If somebody wants to buy a home in the next seven days or a year from now, you're not treating them any different. What I am saying is what's that funnel look like? What's your pipeline look like? How many potential buyers and sellers do you have in your pipeline? I'm pausing because I want you to talk to me. I'm pausing because I want somebody to take themselves off mute. Not enough. Tell me. Not enough. <laughs> Okay, then Angel, let's have a coaching conversation. Okay. This is either a lead generation conversation or it's a lead conversion conversation. So not enough. Is that lead generation or is it lead conversion? Generation. Lead generation. And what's the solution? To not be passive anymore. You've been talking to me the last couple of days. I've been the passive agent, blessed with opportunity um, and busy because I don't have a transaction coordinator. So mm. that would that would change my life. There you go. Now so I go. Those. So go from being in passive lead generation to being an active lead generation. Great job. Twenty contacts a day. It's just that simple. If I'm baking a cake, I'm going to follow the recipe. And the recipe, in order to create a successful real estate business, part of that recipe is twenty contacts a day. It's not nineteen. It's not eighteen. It's not seventeen. It's twenty. 
And by the way, for me, it's 20 contacts a day and at least one appointment scheduled with somebody who is thinking of selling their home or someone who is thinking of buying a home. And I'm adding one person to my database. That's the recipe. Now, if I, if, if I have 20 conversations and I schedule at least one appointment and I add at least one person to my database, I have followed the recipe 100%. And when I do that, success is the only option. You can't fail even if you tried to fail. Think about that. You can't fail even if you tried to fail. Just follow the recipe. Okay. So page 100. In a prosperous market. Are we in a prosperous market? Say yes. 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 Cindy Hayden was sharing. You guys didn't think I was listening. I was. Cindy Hayden was sharing that 79% of the homes that are listed are selling in less than 30 days. Yes. Yes. Okay. Is that a good thing? Say yes. no. Say no. It's no. not a good thing. The reason it's not a good thing is because we're not doing our job. If we were doing our job, there would be more homes for sale. That's true. The reason there are, there's a shortage of inventory is because we're not doing our job. It's not because there's people who don't want to sell their home. And I don't mean that to be critical, so nobody jump off the call. Let's see, we have 47. Let's see how many people jump off the call right now. That John Deeds is a jerk, I'm gone. <laughs> Don't hear that. Nope. If we were doing our job, there would be more homes for sale. Correct. If every single time a property sold, you followed the recipe that I've been giving you for the last week, which is walk the neighborhood, put a, put a door hanger on every door. The message is a home in your, in your neighborhood recently sold, which is awesome. And there are buyers looking for great homes like yours and there's a shortage of inventory, who do you know that might be interested in selling their home? Follow that door hanger up with a postcard in two days that is mailed to their home that, set, that shares the same exact message. Now they've gotten two touches from you in five days. Follow that postcard up with a phone call three days later, calling everybody in the neighborhood with the same message. Hey, this is John Deeds, Keller Williams Realty. The reason for my call today is a home in your neighborhood recently sold, which is great news. And we have buyers that are looking for great homes like yours. Just out of curiosity, who do you know that might be thinking of selling their home? If every single one of us was following that recipe, would we get more listings? Say yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. If every single one of us followed that recipe every single day for the next 90 days, would that 79% absorption rate 79% of the homes that are being listed getting sold every 30 days, would that number eventually get down to 50%, 40%, and 30%? Say yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it would, because we're going out and getting more listings. In a prosperous market, there are usually many agents relying on passive lead generation, casual referrals, and luck to create business. That's called lead receiving. Unfortunately, real estate agents who are in business of lead receiving may find themselves selling very few houses when the market shifts. Red flag. You should see warning, warning, remember lost in space. Warning, Will Robinson, warning. <laughs> well, everybody on the call that's younger than 40 years old is going, what the heck is he talking about? YouTube, lost in space, you'll know what I'm talking about. Conversely, if you actively and systematically focus on lead generating through direct prospecting and marketing activities, you will always be doing the best you can, even in shifting markets. In the battle of lead generating versus lead receiving, lead generating always meant wins, no matter what the market. Listen, all you could do is all you could do. And at the end of the day, all you can do is enough. When you did, all you could do. You want me to repeat that? Because if I'm taking notes, I'm writing that down. Matter of fact, I'm writing that down in, 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 in present person and in, 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 in me. So all I could do is all I could do. 
And at the end of the day, all I can do is enough when I've done all I can do. So if I were coaching you and we were having a conversation at the end of the day and you said, John, here's what I did today. Awesome. My question would be, did you do all you could do? Could you have made one more call? Could you have knocked on one more door? Did you end the day on empty? When my son was playing football, it was the same message, message when I was talking to him. It was Colin, all you could do is all you could do. Play the game with every single bit of energy you have. When you walk off that football field, you should walk off that football field exhausted, on empty. You don't have an ounce of energy left in your body. The good news is you get to go home, you get to drink a lot of water, you get to eat, and, and you get to recover. However, you didn't walk off the field with anything left. Are you finishing the day with gas in your tank? If you are finishing the day with gas in your tank, then you're not doing all you could do. We have 50 people on the call. Nobody's jumping off. That's cool. So are you doing all you could do? And most of us aren't. Here's why. Because we settle for good. Jim Collins, good is the enemy of great. The reason there are so few great, successful real estate agents is because there are a lot of good ones. And we settle. We settle for good enough. The reason there are not more great companies is because there are a lot of really good companies. Now think about it like this for a moment, guys. If you've gone out to dinner before and you've eaten dinner at a restaurant and, and the food was good, the service was good, and the atmosphere was good, did you go home and call all your friends and say, wow, you got to try this restaurant. The food was good. The service was good. The atmosphere was good. No, of course you didn't because we don't refer people who are good. We refer people who are great. We refer people who exceed our expectations. We go to a restaurant where the food was exceptional, where the service was exceptional, where the atmosphere was exceptional. You got to try this restaurant. Are we settling for good when great is still an option? Most of us do because great is painful. Great is uncomfortable. All right, take yourself off mute. Talk to me. Tell me what you heard. Huh? Talk to me. I know a few times, um, during our team meetings and such, Alan, and I'm sure you have also have played that video uh, with the football player where they put him on your back, just a little bit more, just a little it's a, bit more. And, it's, a death, it's a death crawl. It's the death crawl yeah. and, the, and the movie is facing the giants. And, and just basically there are plenty of times during the course of the day when you're getting tired and you're exhausted and you're like, hey, I'm done enough. Just that one more phone call, that one more phone call could be a $6,000 commission. Just yes, one yes. more call. Yes. Yes. Especially if you haven't, especially if you haven't accomplished your, your, your 20 people. Just yes. one more. Alex, thank you so much for sharing that. Let me tell you another reason why we're settling, guys. We're settling because our subconscious is fighting our desire to be great. You are in a battle with your subconscious. Your subconscious is telling you, oh, you do, you'll just pick it up tomorrow. You didn't hit your goal today, you'll get it tomorrow. Don't worry, you'll make up for what up for the for 20 contacts tomorrow. Oh, you only got 18, no worries, you'll get 22 tomorrow. You didn't schedule an appointment, it's okay, you'll schedule two tomorrow. You are lying to yourself, 100%. You are settling because you won't pick, up, pick it up tomorrow. We're settling because good, we've been told good is enough. We've also been told that great is bad. Money, right. is, e money is evil. Right. Should, why are you so focused on money, John? Why are you so driven for success? 
I don't work for money. Well, I have news for you. Yes, you do. Because if you had enough, you would stop. You would stop working. When you get to the point where you've made all the money you need to make, you'll stop, which means you're working for money. Now, I'll tell you who's not working for money. Gary Keller's not working for money. <clears throat> Gary Keller doesn't need money. Does Gary Keller need money, Victoria? No. Yeah. No. Now, here's what I know about Gary Keller. He's working harder now than he ever has in his entire life. And he doesn't need the money. Talk, talk to you. Go ahead. John, it's, it's actually um, really funny that you say how our subconscious mind is like our worst enemy. Mm. Yesterday, I kept saying, I'm tired. I'm going to take a nap. I'm tired. I'm going to take a nap. And then my integrity was like, keep working. And I was, you know, making calls. And I ended up calling a, high, a friend from high school. And he's like, I'm glad you called me because I'm, uh, I'm looking to move. I need a Tamika, you froze. And thank you yes. for sharing that. And I'm so proud of you for fighting that inner voice and choosing to not settle, to not take that nap, to get on the phone and make more calls. All you could do is all you could do. And you chose to end the day with your gas tank on empty. Hey, John. Yes. I think... I don't think that you work for the money. I think you found a different currency that you're working for. And just like Gary Keller, it's not a, ma it's not a matter of the money. It's a matter of what your currency is. And in his case and in your case, it's a matter of getting that energy back from helping other people. And that's what I need to do is I need to find out what my currency is, what my big why is. It's not about the money for me. It's a matter of helping people. I love that, Alex. Thank you for sharing that. And I am more than happy to sit down and have a conversation with you and help you discover that big why. Lunch. Talk to me, guys. It's 8.56. We're going to jump off this call at exactly 9 o'clock. You've got four minutes left to go. What are you hearing? Remember, this is not for entertainment purposes. I'm not that entertaining. You guys can turn on Netflix. That's a lot more fun. You're here to learn and grow. To my productivity coaches, what are you going to implement today with your pro coaching clients? What are you going to hold them accountable to, to everyone else on the call? What are you hearing? What are you going to do different? More let them settle for good when great is right around the corner. Oh, great is always around the corner, Eddie. By the way, great is always in front of us. Great is a destination that will never, ever achieve because we're in a constant pursuit of perfection because what would you do if you got there I mean if, if, you, if your goal is to get to the top of the mountain what do you do when you get there turn around go back what if you're climbing a mountain that doesn't have a top keep climbing keep climbing baby or look for the next look for the taller, next tallest mountain well, here's what it is Kevin it's not about what we get by reaching the top of the mountain it's who we become on the journey. And what that's, you learn. And what you learn. And, and, and that's just another way of saying I'm in a constant pursuit of perfection. Mm -hmm. All right, one more and we're gonna jump. So goals are non-negotiable. 20 contacts and one scheduled appointment. Yeah, goals are non-negotiable. Great and is that, extraordinary, good is ordinary. There you, go. there you go. I like that. Great is, great is extraordinary. Good is ordinary. Good job, Tamika. Love that. All right, here's your visual. You and I are in a boat. The boat is three miles offshore. The boat sank. We have one option, swim to shore. Well, we actually have two options. The other option is die. And I'm going to choose not to die. 
So I'm swimming to shore, and there is absolutely zero chance that I'm not getting to shore. Alex, my big why, my wife, my children are standing on that shore, and they need me to, to make my destination. And I'm going to make my destination. I'm not going to stop and look at Facebook. I'm not going to stop and say, hey, did, did you see the baseball game yesterday? Can you believe that? I'm not going to stop and complain about the market. I'm not going to look at my email. I'm not going to have a conversation with the person sitting in the cubicle next to me. I'm swimming to shore. And there is zero chance that I'm, that I'm not going to get to shore. Now, if I worked every day with that same focus and energy, and that's the key to success, guys. It's not the number of hours you work. It's the amount of energy and focus you put into your time. If I worked with that same focus and energy every single day, holy cow, what could I achieve? So your job today is to get into your one thing, which is lead generation with the same focus and energy as if you were swimming three miles to shore. And just like Victoria said, this is non-negotiable. By the way, if, I, if, if it's three miles and I swim 2.9 miles, did I achieve my goal? No, I'm still going to die. I'm still not making it to my destination. 2.9 miles is not okay. Three miles is the only option. If your job is 20 contacts, add one person to the database every single day, schedule one appointment with someone who's thinking of buying or selling a home, and then follow up forever, if you, if you hit those metrics, every day with the same focus and energy that you would swimming three miles to shore to save your life, there is no, there is no limit. E to P, hit a, hit a ceiling, you'll, you'll break through ceiling after ceiling after ceiling after ceiling after ceiling, and you will build an extraordinary business in order to live the life that you deserve to live. 9 a.m., time to get to work. Go hit those contacts. Super proud of you guys. Phone call away. Thanks, man. John. It's made, make it a great day. Thank you, Thank John. You.